Hello, welcome to this video session. In this video session, we'll be introducing the VECA with a learning outcome. Uh, wherein, after watching this video, we expect the audience will be able to explore VECA on their own. So, primarily, this video would be a hands on session wherein I'll be actually be showing you uh, the various interfaces of VECA and uh, what all we can do through using VECA uh, machine learning toolkit. So, let us switch to VECA editor. So going back, let me switch to a Veka editor. So now I have a Veka editor open. Now the moment you open a Veka, you always see this uh, five buttons to its uh, right side here. Now let us quickly understand what is the use of these five buttons and uh, what all we can do with uh, this each of these button. Generally most of us we always uh, go with explorer, then uh, some little bit uh, expertise user they prefer either experimenter or a workbench and uh, we do also have a simple CLI so you do also see a command line interface here so the advantage of command line interface is that it's uh, it, it lets you handle Weka using command line uh, interface commands which have been listed on the Weka documentation site so mostly we are concerned with these four buttons. What are these four, 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 four of these buttons? So when you go and open the Weka Explorer, what you see is in a screen where you can explore the various functionality of Weka. So that is a primitive one where you can load the data set from a file, ARFF file, database and try out few clustering, classification and some kind of machine learning and data mining algorithms. But uh, the second button, which is named an experimenter is more detailed one. What this button lets you do is if I click on this, it opens a screen wherein it lets you set up a specialized experiment with the help of various algorithms and data sets. So the object of this experiment is to compare multiple algorithms on a data set or compare multiple data sets with respect to one algorithm where you will get a very detailed result uh, of comparisons. You can compare uh, two algorithms where it, it's it's almost like an apple to apple comparisons. So it uh, lets an ML developer to compare two algorithms for a specific ML problem and also at the same time let him save the results for future analysis and further conclusions. So let me quickly open explore and uh, show you how the screen looks. This is how the screen looks when I open Veka Explorer here. And uh, when you click on open, this is how you load a data set. And you can also load a data set from a URL. And further are self-explanatory. The generate lets you generate uh, data uh, for us. So generally, by looking onto the screen under the pre-process tab, one of the very important to note down, some very important is this ability to apply a filter on a specific data set. So, if I load uh, some sample data set, let me load a sample data set from the Veka installation itself. So I have my Veka installed on C drive. You will find a folder data. Under this, uh, let me do one thing. Let me load this iris data set. So when I load this iris data set, these are the attributes in that and this is a label. So uh, it's a famous classification uh, data set used for uh, showing the demonstration of how the classification algorithm works. So that's how we load the data set and here this attribute, this window here uh, shows you some of the fundamental statistical properties associated with that. For example, I have selected a sepal length and you can see that it's minimum value mean standard deviation which gives uh, a good amount of idea to the ML developer about the uh, entropy present in this attribute which could be very much useful in deciding uh, the or which could be very much useful in feature engineering when the number of features are too many so this is this is there but uh, one thing which is to be very much important is is your filters so here under filters we have uh, two types of filters supervised and unsupervised so what exactly is supervised and unsupervised filter so supervised filters, they work on class label. So whatever the filtering works here, they look at the class label 
and sometimes I want some filtering applied on uh, one specific column or in a set of uh, rows in your data set irrespective of what the class label to which that record belongs. So that time we prefer unsupervised filtering and under supervised and unsupervised you always find two, four, two more categories called as attribute and instance based. Attribute related uh, filters they are some which work on column wise so they apply on an entire column and instance wise are some which apply row wise so they apply uh, horizontally on a specific set of rows based on what are the criteria which you give so we'll have a separate video session to demonstrate actual working of attribute based and instance based pre filters so when you explore unsupervised here too you will find uh, in fact you will find more number of uh, pre filters on unsupervised because uh, most of normal uh, most of uh, pre-processing can be done on column independent of uh, class labels if there isn't any much of uh, uh, relation between that. So uh, some of the very famous pre-filtering is uh, you can uh, discretize the column values, uh, you can um, convert a nominal to binary, binary to nominal and at the same time some of the very famous are normalizing. So what they do is they let you normalize entire uh, column in a specific range. So there are many pre-filters available. So when you click on instance based, there are few for example randomizing records or setting a subset or removing a duplicates. So these are one which apply at row level. So these are the pre-filters on that. So once I load the data here, what you next wise we move is we either try to classify the data set here by choosing few classifier algorithms or cluster it association select attributes are one which lets you do a feature engineering specifically like information gain or want to you want to know what's the gain ratio and here they let you visualize the data with the various helps of uh, plot matrices so this is a general overview of explore screen so once i close the explore screen and if i open experimenter window what you will see is you will see a completely different set wherein here what you see is here you set up an experiment and when you set up an experiment you add few data sets under this and then you add a few algorithms on that. So it's like uh, the way like you can test one single algorithm on multiple data sets or one data set and you can test multiple algorithms. So the comparative uh, uh, analysis of this uh, working of algorithms either data data set wise or algorithm wise it's generated and later we load it and we do a comparison on that. So this is used when we shortlist few algorithms to be applied to ML problem and then on we set up a detailed experiment to find out which algorithm is better and which is poor one and uh, how internally they have an effect on that. So this is an experimenter. We will have uh, for the series of video sessions on uh, each of these uh, screens with the help of a, a good use case example. So after experimenter, we have knowledge flow. The knowledge flow is nothing but whatever you do under explorer and experimenter, this lets you do with the help of uh, GUI. So it's like a drag and drop interface where you can uh, uh, apply few filters. So you see what all, whatever we, we could see there everything is available here and what you need to do is you need to just make sure uh, this is a graphical way of uh, designing that okay so for few who are not much used to the way they we handle explore and experimenter some might even try out their handset uh, gui based as well so after that then we have a workbench, workbench is far more powerful and it has a detailed setup of uh, working with this and it's slightly better than uh, explorer and it's far more sophisticated with more detailed result analysis and ability to uh, have a better workflow based machine learning processes under that. So this is a workbench and when you click on simple CLI it lets you type uh, Weka class names and let you invoke algorithms configure and uh, train data sets using completely command line uh, commands. So this is uh, Weka here. So let me quickly switch back to our presentation and I have a small reflection quiz for you. So what do you think? Does Weka uh, support normalization with the help of pre-filters? What do you think? Is it a true or false? You can pause the video and you can go back to earlier slides and try to guess the answer for this. 
but the answer for this question is yes it supports normalization so normalization is nothing but it we we uh, we, we bring a values in a specific range and uh, sometimes it's a very important transformation on data when we are particular with specific algorithms which are very sensitive to the data range values so uh, as a further resource for you to explore, I would advise or suggest you to go through this documentation of uh, Weka, wherein uh, most of this information and uh, the uh, some of the instructions to repeat some experiments have been very well given there. So that's it for this video. Thank you.